Greetings fellow dungeon delvers and welcome to Dorans and Dragons. My name is Justin and I'm going to be your guide to bringing your favorite League of Legends champions to life in Dungeons and Dragons. Today we're building Dr. Mundo, who goes where he pleases. Dr. Mundo is a Zaunite who was once an enforcer for a Chem Baron. Mundo made a mistake that infuriated the Chem Baron enough to have him commit Mundo to the Oswald Asylum. The Asylum experimented on and tortured Mundo to the point where he lost his former identity and forged a new one from his environment, mistaking his straitjacket for a doctor's coat and calling himself Dr. Mundo. He treated everyone at the Asylum, slaughtering all of his patients. One day his Chem Baron came back to collect his enforcer and Mundo treated him as well. Mundo still resides in his hospital, only occasionally wandering out to find patients who need to be cured. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to thank one of this month's Doran's Blade patrons, Swiftwind. Swiftwind chose Dr. Mundo to build as part of the rewards for our Blade Tier Plus patrons. If you like our videos and want to support the channel, come join us over on Patreon today. Just a quick reminder that our Discord is now public for anyone to join. Details are down in my link tree below. Alright, now let's get into it. Here's a quick preview of the build. For race, we're going with Orc. For our usual, our stats are going to be determined using the standard array. For our stat priorities, we're going to max strength and dump intelligence. We do have a multi-class requirement of 13 in strength and charisma. Our leveling path is going to be levels 1 through 5 in Paladin, then we'll grab 4 levels of Barbarian, and then we'll finish out the build as a Paladin. Mundo's passive, Go Where He Pleases, will come from Freedom of Movement, and Lay on Hands. His Q, Infected Bone Saw, is going to be Improved Divine Smite, and the Slasher Feet. Our W, Heart Zapper, comes from our Storm Aura and Inspiring Smite. His E, Blunt Force Trauma, will come from Thunderous Smite. And finally, we get our ultimate, Maximum Dosage, from Adrenaline Rush and Aura of Vitality. For race, we're going to get Mundo's mutated brutish form with the orcs from Monsters of the Multiverse. Using Tasha's ability score calculations, we'll grab a plus 2 to our constitution and a plus 1 to our strength. So we'll start off with both of those scores at a 16, which feels very on par for Mundo. We'll also pick up the movement speed steroid and a bit of the heal from our ultimate with Adrenaline Rush. This feature has uses based on your proficiency bonus that allow you to dash as a bonus action, and when you do so, you get temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. On top of that, you'll be able to carry your patients back to your hospital with your powerful build, counting you as large when it comes to determining your ability to move stuff around. And your final feature is Relentless Endurance, which is a once per long rest ability you can use when you're reduced to zero hit points to only be reduced to one instead. This feels like peak Mundo, when you think you finally killed him and instead he got that last little bit of healing off and now he's chasing you again. For background, we'll cobble a custom background together called Zonate Doctor, which will give us skill proficiencies in medicine and nature with the bad reputation feature. No matter where you go in Zon, people are afraid of you due to your history of curing patients against their will. For stats, we're emulating the balance Ride achieved with his new visual gameplay update with the standard array. Roll if you want to, just keep at least a 13 in strength and charisma for multi-classing purposes. We'll start off with a 15 in our strength for our huge bot and being able to throw our cleaver like a truck. Constitution is after that because what is Mundo if not a hulking force of nature? Next will be Charisma, which works not only for multi-classing purposes, but for intimidation purposes as well. Then we'll go Dexterity for a little bonus to our AC. Our Wisdom is going to be Average, and we'll dump Intelligence for obvious reasons. On the Equipment side of things, all we need is a Hand Axe, which will be flavored as our Infected Cleaver. If your DM is looking for ideas or upgrades for magic items, Maybe just ask them if never cleaning the blood and guts off your cleaver will make it gross enough to deal some extra necrotic damage when it punches into people. Alrighty, now we're going to kick off the build with some levels in Paladin. I know a lot of people are probably going to be expecting something a bit different here, but when we get to level 3 I'll explain a little more. Paladins have a d10 hit die, give us proficiency with our hand axe, and skill proficiencies in athletics and intimidation. We'll also get a pool of healing to use across our various abilities with Lay on Hands. You have a pool of hit points equal to 5 times your paladin level that you can use as an action to heal yourself. You can also use 5 of these hit points to cleanse a disease or neutralize a poison affecting you. Second level paladins gain spellcasting, which is going to give our E with thunderous smite. You'll charge your cleaver with thunder energy, and when you make your next attack, you'll deal an extra 2d6 thunder damage, enforce a strength save on the creature you hit, pushing it back 10 feet and knocking it prone if they fail. We also get to learn a fighting style at this level, and we'll improve our auto attacks with dueling. 
since we're only using our cleaver, it'll get a plus two to all damage rolls. Our final level two feature is Divine Smite, which can also be used to power up your E damage. When you hit with a melee attack, you can expend a spell slot to deal radiant damage. It starts out with 2d8 radiant with a first level slot, and then as you expend higher level slots, you just add another d8 for each level you go up. Now this is definitely not rules as written, but I would definitely ask your DM in the case for Mundo if you could add your Divine Smite to your throne attacks to buff your Q as well. We'll get something later to enhance our Q throw anyways, but this would be nice too. Level 3 Paladins get Divine Health, which makes them immune to disease. This is perfect for Mundo, who has so many chemicals running through his system, diseases have no chance. More importantly though, they choose their Sacred Oath. We're going to pick up some awesome self-healing and attack and movement speed steroids with the Oath of Glory. The glory in this case is curing as many patients as you can. I don't normally go into the tenants, but let's please read through these together and laugh as I give them the Mundo treatment to fit Mundo. Action over words. Strive to be known by glorious deeds, not words. Well, I'm pretty sure the entirety of Zahn is terrified of you for your deeds, so check. Challenges are but tests. Face hardships with courage and encourage your allies to face them with you. I mean, enduring torture and using it to forge yourself into something stronger is definitely a check mark for this one. Hone the body. I think this one speaks for itself with all the chemtech augmentation Mundo's gone through. Discipline the soul. He's overcome many failings and now works to cure the rest of the world of their failings as well. Jokes aside, this subclass is great for Mundo, giving us a plethora of options thanks to our Oath of Glory spell list. On top of that, our Channel Divinity options for this subclass are a 10 minute Strength Steroid and Inspiring Smite, letting us heal 2d8 plus our Paladin level and hit points as a bonus action whenever we deal damage with Divine Smite. Fourth level Paladins get the first ability score improvement of the build. As always, we'll go over all of your choices here so you can pick and choose for yourself along the way. At Paladin 4, we'll get Fighting Initiate to pick up the Throne Weapon Fighting Style, giving us a plus 2 to our cleaver damage when we toss it at a patient. At Barbarian 4, we'll get the slow on our Q with the Slasher Feet, bumping our strength by 1 and making our cleaver damage reduce the speed of any creature it hits by 10 feet. On top of that, when you land a critical hit, the creature has disadvantage on their attack rolls until the start of your next turn. At Paladin 8, we'll get the Tough Feet to buff up our hit point pull by 2 points per character level. Then at Paladin 12, we'll round off our strength and charisma with a point each. And finally at Paladin 16, we'll bump our constitution to more points for some additional tankiness. Level 5 Paladins get extra attack, letting us swing our cleaver twice per attack action. We always like to get here before we multi-class because getting this extra attack is a very satisfying jumping off point before you get your other higher level features. And speaking of that, we're changing gears over to the Barbarian for a few levels for some AC and RW. Barbarians have a d12 hit die, giving us a little bit of love in the health department. We also get the iconic Barbarian feature, their Rage. As a bonus action, you can Rage for one minute, gaining advantage on your strength checks and saves, increased damage with your cleaver attacks, and resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. The only con to this for our purposes is you can't cast any spells, and any spells that require concentration are broken when you rage, so we wouldn't be able to keep up our aura of vitality. We also get a new AC calculation thanks to Unarmored Defense, letting our new AC become 10 plus our con and dex modifiers. If you're playing in the lower levels, you may want to consider grabbing this multi-class sooner, or maybe wearing a bit of armor until you get to this point. Barbarians get Reckless Attack and Danger Sense. Reckless Attack lets you make all attacks on your turn with advantage, at the cost of all attacks against you having advantage as well. I feel like Mundo can only attack recklessly, so this probably needs to be permanently turned on. Danger Sense will help with your passive by giving you advantage on your deck saves against any effect you can see. Level 3 Barbarians choose their primal path. We're going to get the crackling electricity of our W with the Path of the Storm Herald, giving us the Storm Aura ability. We'll choose the channel the energy of the sea and have crackling lightning surround us, which we can send out as a bonus action and force a deck save on a creature within 10 feet of us. If they fail, they'll take 1d6 lightning damage. And with our W taken care of, we'll switch back over to levels in Paladin. Level 7 Glory Paladins get Aura of Alacrity, which is yet another movement speed steroid, increasing your walking speed by 10 feet. If any of your allies start their turn within 5 feet of you, they'll also get the 10 feet walking speed buff. Level 9 Paladins get 3rd level spells. We're going to get our ultimate from Aura of Vitality, a spell that'll turn you into a beacon of healing for a minute, 
Letting you heal yourself, 2d6 hit points as a bonus action on each of your turns. You can technically heal other people within 30 feet of you with this, but that's not really a Mundo thing. Level 11 Paladins get Improved Divine Smite, which makes all of your attacks with your cleaver deal an additional 1d8 radiant damage. This includes you throwing your cleaver. So now you'll be able to stack Dueling, Thrown Weapon Fighting, and Improved Divine Smite for a decent amount of extra damage on your Q. Level 13 Glory Paladins get Freedom of Movement, which we'll use for the CC immunity on our passive. For an hour, you're unaffected by difficult terrain, your speed cannot be reduced, and you cannot be paralyzed or restrained. If you're already restrained by non-magical restraints or a creature is grappling you, you can spend 5 feet to escape. Alright, now that we have completed the build, let's see how we did. First the good. Oath of Glory Paladins have so much mobility and so much CC immunity, it's absurd. We also have almost 250 hit points, with an 80 hit point pool on Lay on Hands, which doesn't even include Aura of Vitality or Inspiring Smite. Now the bad. The main negative here is we won't be able to use our ultimate and W at the same time. Our AC isn't great as well, but you'll have so much health and healing, it won't matter. So what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below, as well as Amazon links to the books used in this build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We plan on turning out one league champion build every week. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift, or in the Forgotten Realms.